What's going on YouTube? Coming back at you with another video. So, I saw this news online about Casanova writing a letter to the judge in his case. I read the letter. I thought it was interesting. I went to the federal um, court document website. I pulled it up. I'm bringing you the letter right now. I think there's a good message in this as well as I think I can add a message I'm covering this because I previously was covering the Casanova case and um, despite the fact that my life took a different turn and I kind of walked away from all this type of content, I thought again that there was uh, something important as far as message that could be relayed through this paperwork. So I'm going to read this to you and then I'm going to give you my thoughts. It says, Judge Halpern, I first wrote this as what I would just say to you on the day that you sentenced me. I do hope to say a few words to you on that day, but I will be nervous and did not want to leave anything out. I would like to thank you, Your Honor, for your consideration. I would like to sincerely apologize to the court, society, and my family for my actions and role in this case and for the victims of gang activities. I take full responsibility of my actions because as a man, I had the power to make different decisions, and I chose not to. I do not have a problem with this court considering the man I was in my youth and the fact that I stayed a member of this gang. What is important to me is that the court see who I truly am and the man I became and tried to be. Your Honor, growing up in the streets of Flatbush, Brooklyn, wasn't easy for me, faced with poverty, struggle, and no dad around, I made bad decisions. Now that is on me, but I would hope that you can understand that I didn't really have anyone showing me a different path. As I spoke to young people in the last few years that were already in the streets and in trouble, and some were on their way there, I thought back to my early days. I tried to be the voice that would tell them not to go where I went. I had been there, and by the grace of God, I was in a place where they would actually listen to me. It took, a, it took time and a lot of hard knocks for me to learn that the streets and crime would doom me. When I was sentenced in 2008 to six years, I thought my life was over. I lost my wife and my family. While I had been in here, I lost my father to cancer. While I put on that strong facade... All I wanted to do was end it. Surviving on Rikers Island in upstate correctional facilities were not easy with racial and gang tension and violence at its height. I had to act the part in there because if I didn't, I would be killed. I will face that same fate now because I am telling you and anyone that will listen to me, or excuse me, that will listen, that I wanted out before I was arrested and I am out. I learned through my music career that people will listen and that I don't need to associate myself with a gang to succeed. I don't need to associate with a gang even if I don't succeed. I came home with a desire to change. I vowed to bring my family back together, my mom, my wife, daughter, my son, and other relatives. I found a new hope when I found music. It wasn't just the fun. The music helped me mentally as I finally, finally found a way to vent something I always had trouble with, battling mental health and social anxiety. I was released from prison in 2013. I completed five years supervised release with no violations, and in 2016, I was given a real opportunity to succeed in a music career. Like other rappers before me, that were in the gang life, I thought I needed to stay in that life in name because it was a way to promote my career. I don't care what the government tells you, I am telling you the truth. I was not involved in the daily activities of this gang. I wasn't anyone's boss. What I was and regret, excuse me, what I was and I regret this was a person that they could use to promote themselves in a world, I swear to you I was trying to leave. I clearly did not do a good job enough, excuse me, 
I clearly did not do a good enough job of this as I find myself in one bad situation after another. Let's go to the next one. It says, for the first time in my life, I felt I could do something good for society. I knew the path of the gang life was a dead end. I mean, dead end. You die on the outside or you die in jail. I found a way to tell young people that. Time and time again, for the first time in my life, I was a real father, a real husband, and a person that could maybe, just maybe, help people avoid my disaster of a life. It felt good being home, doing the right thing, for the first time in my life. The government will tell you that all my music was about gangs and violence. It wasn't. Some was because it sold. I used that image to sell music legally. Other raps were not. One song made it clear that life in jail was the most depressing one a person could find themselves in. I did use the gangster image as an artist, but that was not the man I was striving to become. I am sorry for my past. I am sorry for the robbery, but I am telling you I acted out of impulse in taking that lady's phone and deleting the video, but this is all I wanted to do. I did not tell anyone to do anything. I had the phone, I was deleting the video, and giving it back. I never intended any harm to come to anyone. I was in a diner. The other two incidents haunt me. I did not intend for any of it to happen. I did not go to the club that night to do anything but celebrate my birthday. The party was a party and I went there to have fun. It was not some gang thing, but it became one. I'm not asking you to ignore the bad. There's plenty of it. I'm asking you to see the other side that was finally starting to shine. I am not the who I am not who the government wants you to believe I am, and I am not a man you or anyone needs to worry about in the future. I am coming out hoping to further my music career without needing or wanting any image. I can make it without it, and I will continue speaking out against the gang life. I stand in front of you today, a 36-year-old man who has made the mistakes that I must put behind me and continue on the path I was on. I have made contacts to continue speaking out against gangs while doing my sentence. This is not something new. I started this years ago. I'm telling you and anyone that will listen, I am no longer a member of Gorilla Stone or any other gang, respectfully, Caswell Sr. Now, I think Casanova really put a good message in this. Some people out there are going to try to down him and try to uh, clown him for writing this letter. I think that this letter um, is important for people out there to hear, especially the youth, for people to hear that somebody like Casanova who really went through it, despite what you think about Casanova, he really went through it. He was really in the streets. He was really spending a good amount of time in prison. He's been through a hard life. He's done a lot of things. He now realizes that the, the choices that he made in life, none of them benefited him. It all, although at the time, um, in some instances, it seemed like it was cool or it was, um, you know, fun or whatever the case may be, that he's telling you in the end, it's not worth it. And I think the most important message that you can get from this is a message that I hope Casanova actually um, finds himself if he hasn't already. And that message is this. The only thing in life that is going to actually bring you any type of fulfillment, any type of actual joy is focusing your attention on God. I'm telling you right now, we don't have much longer. Stuff is really about to get crazy and hectic in this world. And if you, before that happens, haven't already established in your life a relationship with God, if you haven't already turn to Jesus, giving your life over to Jesus, been baptized, um, actually trying on a daily basis to grow as a person and as a Christian. If you haven't already done that, 
Um, or if you don't do that before things start to get crazy, it's going to be too late for you more than likely. I can't judge. I don't, I, you know, I don't have all the insight that God has, but I know that um, the path that leads to life is narrow and the path that leads to destruction is wide. And most people don't find the narrow path and they don't walk it. Most people out here are definitely on the path that leads to destruction. So you need to ask yourself, where do you want to be? Do you want to be on the path that most people are on? They're going to go to a place where they don't want to be. They're not going to get another opportunity. Or do you want to be on a path that most people aren't on? That leads you to life. For me, my whole life, and I'm not saying this from a place of um, like of being egotistical or conceited, but I've always been a leader. I never followed anybody else. I never did what anybody else was doing. I didn't care what other people do, were doing. All I wanted to do was know the truth in life. And I found that truth. The truth is Jesus Christ. The truth is the Bible. And if you don't make that your truth, if you don't make that um, important to you in your life, you're going to be doomed. So um, long story short, um, shout out to Casanova for denouncing the gang life, for letting people know what it really is. Because despite the fact that he's about to get sentenced, I'm sure that what he was saying was actually coming from a genuine place. He doesn't want to live the gang life. He doesn't want to be involved in this stuff. Um, whether or not he saw it before he actually got locked up, and, you know, is now facing, I don't, I think it's 60 years in prison before he got locked up in this situation, whether or not he actually saw it then, I don't know, but I can guarantee you right now, Casanova wishes he could go back and he wishes he could do it over. And the things that he's saying in this letter are actually sincere and genuine. So take heed, listen to what Casanova is saying. Hopefully you hear the message that I'm trying to bring to you. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments, though. I appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, uh, share, leave some feedback. You can check me out also on Instagram um, at Hip Hop Classics Daily, all one word. I appreciate you watching. Peace.